Hello everybody, welcome back to theCUBE. We're live here at Dell Tech World. Come on inside theCUBE. I'm here with Bob LaLiberté, my co-host. Really excited to have two CUBE alum, some of our favorite guests. Caitlin Gordon is the Vice President of Product Management and Shannon Champion, Vice President of Product Marketing at Dell Technologies. Ladies, welcome back to theCUBE. Great to see you. It is great to be back. We're talking Apex. Yes, we are. Love Apex. We're talking about hybrid AI, hybrid cloud. Apex is essentially the cloud operating model brought to your customers. What's new in, in Apex? What's the momentum like? A lot of buzz. There's a lot going on. I mean, our Apex strategy has really always, always been about Apex you know, cloud consumption, which is Apex subscriptions, and then cloud experiences with our Apex multi-cloud. And a lot of that was all about how do we simplify consumption and operations of IT infrastructure. And uh, that's more important than ever for our customers, whether it's multi-cloud by design or just simplifying and making an OpEx op model for the consumption of that infrastructure. We're having more and more conversations with a broad set of customers because this need is just increasing every day. So you've been doing this now for a while, talking to customers, evolving the messaging, the marketing, the positioning, you know, the competitive angles, the differentiation. So you guys got some action going on at the show. Right, you, you always carry a news in your back pocket. Yep, <laughs> for Tell sure. Us about it. Well, last year it was the Apex show, right? Um, and it sort of set the stage for this last year of continuous innovation, I'll just say that. And so, from a momentum perspective, with Apex, we are in every major cloud ecosystem. We introduced eight Apex offers over the last year and continuing to build upon them with over 500 software-based advancements across the portfolio in the last year. And we've expanded global reach and availability to 134 countries so our customers can take advantage of that multi-cloud by design in more places around the world. Awesome, that's great. I mean, clearly there's a lot of emphasis on multi-cloud environments these days and, and whatnot, and you've made a lot of advancements over the last year. I'm, I'm assuming there's also maybe a few that you've made this week as well. So perhaps, Caitlin, you want to go in and talk a little bit about some of the announcements that you're making this week. We always have announcements. I, we, we are talking a lot about AI, but there's a lot of multi-cloud and Apex announcements, so we'll go through them. First is the Apex Navigator announcements. So we have enhancements to our Apex Navigator for multi-cloud storage. We've had support in the past for Block and AWS. Now we're expanding both the type of storage and the public cloud support by adding file support, so Apex File, in both AWS and Azure. So really expanding that portfolio and the in official introduction of Apex Navigator for Kubernetes. So really bringing that same simplicity to Kubernetes storage management. It's really something that expands this whole Apex Navigator strategy and story that we started talking about last year and now is real. Yeah, that's absolutely, and it's going to be imperative for all those organizations deploying modern application environments and architectures, right? Leveraging that Kubernetes space, being able to manage it under a single you know, yeah, comprehensive and platform. And simplifying it at scale, that's yeah. really the key. Yeah. Why, is it, why is file so hard in the cloud? It's like, because the cloud file is kind of crappy. And, <laughs> and it's, right, you know what I mean? You, know, you guys have to come and, and bring the stack, but what, is there something unique about cloud that makes it, makes it difficult, or is it just? I, I don't think it's of, unique about cloud, I think it's unique about file. Yeah, it okay. seems simple on the face of it, but then when you have to have an enterprise class scalable file system, it's actually a lot harder, and I think the public clouds have figured that out too. And obviously we've been in this space for a long time with 1FS and PowerScale, and bringing that to the public cloud is really just enabling not only a more compelling file storage in the public cloud, but also seamless operations with what also customers have on-prem, which is yet another challenge for a cloud to be able to accomplish. Yeah, so when you start with the mindset of get put, Right? Yeah. And it's, it's, to do file, it's, uh, it's not so easy. It, it turns out it's not so easy. It always looks yeah. easy from the other side. It? <laughs> <laughs> so clearly there's been a lot of organizations talking about that shift to the public cloud over the last several years in multi-cloud and so forth, but what struck me today was there was a lot of talk about on-prem as well. And not so much from, hey, do you have to fully repatriate, but Certainly for AI and things like that, organizations are going to want to have a lot of those, that infrastructure back on premises. So, obviously you've got the, the Apex Cloud platforms. So I'm wondering if you could share a little bit about what's going on there and what you're doing to help organizations to modernize their on-premises infrastructure as well. 
Yeah, I mean, a lot of what we talked about today is you bring AI to the data, and the data is in the data center. And one of the philosophies for the Apex Cloud Platform is really to simplify operations. We, we felt in the past you know, six months to 12 months, there's almost a private and hybrid cloud resurgence in this conversation, um, driven by AI and many other topics. So what we've announced this week is really an additional support for our Apex Cloud Platforms. For Microsoft, first of all, supporting new AI solutions on that, and then on our Apex Cloud Platform for Red Hat OpenShift, we've really optimized that for AI. So that includes new GPU support, support for object storage, and new solutions with a Red Hat OpenShift. Right, and that's really giving organizations the opportunity to drive a lot of operational efficiency, regardless of where they're hosting their applications or their data. So whether it's in the public cloud, whether it's on-prem, you've got one consistent solution to, to enable you to, to operate more efficiently and ultimately even deliver better experiences. Yeah, and in a lot of ways, it's we built this with VxRail for VMware, and we can take that same philosophy to Red Hat OpenShift, which is ideal for AI, as well as actually virtualization. So there's right. a lot of excitement around that, as well as our, our Microsoft partnership. Are you hinting that there's maybe people looking at alternatives for their virtualization strategy? They might be, Okay, yeah. all right, just checking. I thought, I've heard that once or twice. Why, why, why would they be doing that? <laughs> There's nothing going on in that space. I've, I've, I've been asleep for a year. <laughs> what, welcome. Yeah, thank you. But, uh, yeah, there's going to be some interesting news uh, coming on that, so we won't, we won't go there. Um, Red Hat, you guys announced, you guys were at Red Hat Summit? We were. Yeah, I wasn't there, but I was kind of watching from afar some interesting things going on there with RAG. You guys with Llama, what's the update there? Yeah, um, we're really excited to partner with Red Hat on a lot of solutions. So in the AI space in particular, there's an update to our digital assistant solution there that is based on RAG model and Llama LLM um, to really help people get started with a digital assistant based on Red Hat OpenShift AI. Um, we also are introducing another AI solution on Red Hat OpenShift AI with NVIDIA Riva for speech um, recognition. So two new AI solutions in addition to the new GPUs and object scale support in the Red Hat space. So a lot, a lot of exciting things in the AI world happening in partnership with Red Hat. When, when, like, when Llama 3 comes out, do you just sort of unplug two and pop in three? <laughs> I, how, I, how does that work? No, we, I wonder because it's like these models are so like advanced and they, they there's this leapfrog effect going on. Not it's quite like, plug and play yet. It's like I, I feel like <laughs> yeah. in my new XPS, which I was so happy with, and then I see these AI PCs come out. I'm like, <laughs> I, I want one. Yeah. I want one too. I, there's I, always I, a shiny new thing around the yeah, corner. Yeah. Right. But it's, I mean, that's kind of the philosophy of the Dell AI factory, right? We have, we have our own you know, internal processes, but more importantly, how are we helping our customers accelerate that time to value and simplify the complexity that is AI for them today. So it's not, it's not exactly plug and play, but that is the experience that ultimately you're working toward That's for your right. customers. Yeah. So they don't have to think about it, it's That's just there. That's the beauty of validated designs, right? Dell does that work of the validation of the full stack, so our customers don't have to do that. Yeah, and we were, we were talking earlier today about, David done a little survey saying, where do you think people are going to, where AI is going to live. And uh, I think a lot of it talked earlier about the, the predominant response was, we think it's going to be in the cloud. And I think a lot of that is just because organizations don't know how to get it on prem, right? It's not like they have a lot of experience, expertise. We know internally Dell has got a major initiative to get AI implemented throughout. So a lot of great learning experiences that you're able to, to drive there. And then obviously be able to put, like you said, those validated designs get that even into Apex to help accelerate the adoption of these AI factories. And I think the other key thing for me this week has been, you know, when I think about AI factories, I was thinking largely data center. But the, the term AI factories for you is more about, hey, how do we standardize the adoption of this and drive it across the entire enterprise? So whether that be the GPU-based servers, whether it be the workstations, all the way down to the AI PC, so that you can drive that inference closer to the edge and you're helping them to, to drive that experience basically in a consumption-based model as well. That's right, we, we want the easy button experience but with the flexibility that they need in the data center. So I think a lot, the reason why a lot of people you know, selected that, it was, we gave them three choices. How is hybrid AI going to evolve? Is it going to be like, like hybrid cloud or is it going to be faster or is the cloud win the day? 
I think a lot of experimentation goes on in the cloud, okay, and then people want to bring it in production, they're like, well, wait a minute. But is it, don't you think that over time, as people become, they, they adopt Apex, they become more comfortable with it, it'll be a lot easier for them to do experimentation in Apex as you build out the services, I mean, would you say 500 new software-based innovations? Okay, we've been busy. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so as you build those out and as you do so in the AI era, experimenting with Apex, you know, shops are going to say, hey, we, we have an experimental platform. So I think that is, people just don't see it yet. Yep. Yeah. So they say, it, what, what do you think about that? Like we didn't touch on yet is, is this concept of Apex universal storage layer, right? Like the, the beauty of that is software defined, enterprise class, storage capabilities on-prem and in the public cloud, which then unlocks the ability for data mobility, so you can optimize that workload placement, you can test it in the cloud, bring it on-prem, sure. and optimize My it My super way. cloud antagonist um, <laughs> uh, of Charles Fitzgerald, when I did this poll, he chimed in and said, would you give up on super cloud? And no, it's there, it's actually happened. You know, just like we said it would, Charles. <laughs> <laughs> no. You couldn't resist. No, I couldn't resist. <laughs> no, but I mean, that was always the concept. Hide all the complexity underneath, you guys take care of that, and, and create, it's really identical experience, irrespective of the physical location. That's what you've done. That didn't just happen, you had to do engineering. Yeah. Right? You had to understand each of the cloud environments, all their primitives, you had to worry about the security. It's different, I mean, it's not trivial to yeah. do that. Yeah, and I think the other great part about what you're doing is that it's not strictly relegated to Dell solutions only, right? You've got an ecosystem. I re recently wrote a blog on it takes an ecosystem and IT takes an ecosystem, and the reality is it's difficult for any one company to do everything, as we evidence by the partners on stage today, right, showing ServiceNow and NVIDIA, et cetera, Samsung, and you have Microsoft, you've got Red Hat and, and many others that you're working with. So it's great that you're able to not only build that ecosystem of validated solutions, but you're then able to, to bundle all that together and deliver that as a single solution. Yeah, and, and do that with the agility required, right? The moving at the speed of AI is different than the world we had been living in. And that's yeah. some of the new challenges and we're lucky to have such great partners to be able to work through that with. You guys still on the multi-cloud by design? Is that still, we are, still absolutely. the thing? So what is that? I live and breathe it. What, what does that in, entail? If you're a, if you're a cloud architect, system architect, application head, what does it mean to be multi-cloud by design? Where do I start? What's that journey look like? It, it come back to simplicity, simplifying operations. Ultimately, AI is just added fuel to what was already happening. Right? Traditional sysadmin, IT admins roles are increasingly becoming both operational and development roles increasingly needing to have AI skills, which means less time to spend on managing the infrastructure. And to feel on top of that, the ecosystem is more complex. So multi-cloud by design, which as we've talked about in the past, really is more multi-vendor, is actually even more important because it's more multi-vendor and the requirements for that simplicity, that operational simplicity, are louder than ever before. So it's really doubling down when you look at what's going on in the data center when we talk about cloud to ground, but also in the, the ground to cloud side of things, as Shannon mentioned, with the universal storage layer, you want to be able to burst to the cloud, leverage the cloud services to get up and running fast, but ultimately you probably want to keep your data, your, your, your precious data on prem when you're going to be de deploying in production. So that side of it is just as important. So okay, then what's the, what are the, the key product challenges there? Is it integration? Uh, is it injecting IT ops? Is that through ecosystem partnerships? Can you paint a picture there? I, I think one of the key challenges we work as a product team is we know that the value that we can bring, for example, with this HCI and the ACP portfolio, is the assurance of that full stack. That assurance is validation as well as development work for us on the automation orchestration. So the challenge for us is we know we need to do that for an ecosystem, so there's a horizontalness to it, but you also have to bring the depth that's going to bring that value. And it's that balance of how far do you go and how deep can you go, and how can you provide that flexibility for customers. That's a lot of the challenge we think about, especially when you kind of look at the, the private hybrid cloud innovation. That's the balance that we struggle with especially quite live right now. <laughs> <laughs> day to day. Very good. Anything else that we didn't hit on? Did we hit all the, the key messaging and 
I guess one, thing, points. one of the things I'll throw out there is you had mentioned that, that how every, all the innovation is accelerating. So maybe how is AI in that innovation cycle with GPUs impacting? So if I'm signing up for a subscription, right, I might be a little bit concerned that hey, there's another, there's another new GPU coming around the corner in another three to six months, and I know even talking from your team, new products are coming out every, maybe as early as nine months to develop it right from scratch. So how is, how is Apex going to adapt to this accelerating innovation cycle? You want to start? Yeah, so I would say two things, right? One is that uh, you can subscribe to any part of the Dell AI factory, right? Like Dell Apex subscription is available across the entire Dell infrastructure, Apex multi-cloud and AI factory set of solutions and products. Uh, and that makes it simple for customers con to consume on a monthly basis and all of that, right? Um, the second way is, um, one thing we didn't touch on yet is the Apex AI Ops capability, which is you know, intelligence within our products. So we have always had infrastructure observability, I say always, for at least a decade, right? Um, we've been delivering that functionality and capability and now we're adding to that so we don't get only infrastructure observability, but you add on application performance observability and monitoring. Um, so really expanding the capability of AI-driven uh, intelligence within our offers. I mean, that's fundamental in, in any cloud, whether it's your cloud or the public cloud, right? So, and that's IP that you guys developed? So, yes, we brought together the IP of the Cloud IQ. Oh, um, right, okay. In partnership with Moogsoft and the acquisition yeah, very that cool. we did right. earlier. Um, and took our IP from the infrastructure observability together with IBM and Stana to um, deliver the application. Oh, nice, oh. connecting the dots yeah. here. There you go. Three integrated offerings all coming together as Apex AI Ops. The AI Apex AI Ops Assistant is yes. actually one of the first customer available Gen AI innovations we put into our own products. So we actually have AI built into this new AI Ops infrastructure observability. And that's a, a pretty you know, straightforward RAG framework with our knowledge base articles, so a customer can just natural language, ask a question, instead of having to dig through the knowledge base articles or call support, they can just ask the questions, get the answer back, really simple user interface, and that's all built internally using st industry standard framework. So that just makes the knowledge base a lot more accessible. Do you, do you foresee a day when, I mean I'm sure you do, but I wonder if you could just comment where the system acts, it's a system of agency. We're not there yet, I presume. <laughs> we're not I, there yet. I wasn't that asleep. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's where we're headed, right? Yeah, we talk a lot about that, is how do we, yes, in, use it for internal development, but also help our customers interact with the product more in that way. Uh, so we have a lot of ideas even where we can start there, but it's exciting to think about where it can go because the speed of innovation here and is just incredible. It can be overwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> That's good though. 500 software-based enhancements, I love see it. see where we are next year, right? And Apex yeah. offers, yeah. Well, you guys, you're a dynamic duo. You're constantly <laughs> raising the bar, you know, amping it up, whatever you want to say. Absolutely. Guys, thanks so much. It's great to see you. Congratulations on all the hard work. You look great, given they haven't slept in a year. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, we'll see you next Love year. Love having you guys on, thank you. Thanks Again, for having appreciate us. all the support. All right, for Bob LaLiberté and Savannah Peterson, my name is Dave Vellante. You're watching theCUBE live from Dell Tech World 2024. We'll be right back. <laughs>